Sometimes deviating from the script produces the greatest magic. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unscripted moments in comedy movies. What is done? Oh my god! Oh. Why did you I'm just keeping do it your real. Because I'm keeping it real. Because I'm keeping it. Because I'm keeping it real. For this list, we're looking at various hilarious scenes from comedy films that were not included in the original script. This doesn't necessarily mean improvisation. These moments could also come about through on-set ideas and slight deviations from the script. As long as the moment deviates from the script in some way, it will be included. If you'd placed it near a river or some sort of fresh water source, that makes sense. But you find yourself in the ocean, 20-foot waves, I'm assuming it's off the coast of South Africa, coming up against a full-grown 800-pound tuna with his 20 or 30 friends, you lose that battle. Number 10. Chest thumping and humming, the Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> Martin Scorsese was 71 years old when The Wolf of Wall Street was released in 2013, yet it proved to be his most dexterous and lightning paced film yet. Most of its delirious entertainment came from its committed and energetic actors including Matthew McConaughey as Mark Hanna. Name of the game, move the money from your client's pocket into your pocket. Right, but if you can make the client's money at the same time, it's advantageous to everyone, correct? <laughs> no. Hanna's weird chest thumping and humming are now iconic, even though it was never in the original script. It was actually a meditation technique that McConaughey used before each take, and it was Leonardo DiCaprio's idea to have him do it in character. He happily performed the technique on camera, DiCaprio looked around in embarrassment, and a glorious piece of pop culture was born. Number 9. I Can Walk, Dr. Strangelove Stanley Kubrick is one of the most famously overbearing and domineering directors of all time, a perfectionist to the highest degree. But not so with Dr. Strangelove. Kubrick would often let Peter Sellers improvise on set, typically during rehearsals, and then he would take what he thought were the best lines and incorporate them into the script. Nuclear reactors could... <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. President. Nuclear reactors could provide power almost indefinitely. Greenhouses could maintain plant life. Animals could be bred and slaughtered. Having a general story outline but allowing your actors to improvise is a creative process known as retroscripting. <laughs> Sellers' most iconic improvisation comes at the very end of the movie, when Strangelove suddenly stands from his wheelchair and proudly proclaims that he can walk. I have a plan. <laughs> Monsieur, I can walk! It's one of the funniest endings in movie history, and it all came from Peter Sellers himself. Number 8. Lewis's Party Dialogue Ghostbusters Rick Moranis faded from the spotlight going into the 21st century, but he left behind an incredible legacy, including a string of iconic comedies and characters. Hey, this is Real Smoked Salmon from Nova Scotia, Canada, $24.95 a pound. Louis Tully is one of his best, exemplified by the brilliant party sequence. It's said that Moranis completely improvised the sequence where Louis introduces Ted and Annette to the other party goers. He decided to discuss the couple's financial situation and mortgage rate, which is certainly hilarious on its own. Ted has a small carpet cleaning business in receivership, and that's drawing a salary from a deferred bonus from two years ago. But he also managed to make boring financial details funny through his delivery and weirdly specific details, proving that Moranis really could make comedy gold out of anything. I'm gonna bring us up at the next tenants meeting. There's not supposed to be any pets in the building. Number 7. Stu's Song, The Hangover During an interview with LiveAbout.com, Ed Helms revealed that the set of The Hangover was a very welcoming and friendly environment. Director Todd Phillips reportedly welcomed improvisation, and many scenes involving Mike Tyson were totally off the cuff. Mike Tyson? <laughs> but perhaps the best bit of unscripted comedy is Stu's song, in which he sings about returning the tiger and finding Doug. Before crystal meth tweakers find him, of course. Helms would often fool around on the piano between takes to entertain the crew, and Phillips decided to have him write a song for the movie. What do tigers dream of when they take a little tiger snooze? Helms wrote, perfected, and recorded the song all in a single day of filming. Number 6. The Most Annoying Sound in the World, Dumb and Dumber 
This was another film that welcomed improvisation. According to director Peter Farrelly, roughly 15% of the finished movie is improvised. But filmmakers should expect that with someone as unabashedly wild as Jim Carrey. No way! <gasps> That's great! We landed on the moon! Carrey reportedly improvised many hilarious scenes throughout the movie, including Lloyd's amazement at landing on the moon and his most annoying sound in the world. Hey, wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? the idea and the sound itself were Carrie's idea. You can even see Jeff Daniels briefly break character and genuinely laugh before joining in. We wonder how many professional actors Carrie has managed to break throughout the years. <laughs> Number 5. I'll have what she's having. When Harry met Sally. Why are you getting so upset? This is not about you. Yes, it is. You are a human affront to all women and I am a woman. This is one of the most iconic romantic comedies of all time, and it contains one of the funniest scenes in movie history. The entire restaurant sequence was one big creative collaboration from the cast and crew. The idea for the scene itself came about in rehearsals when a stunned Rob Reiner was told by writer Nora Ephron that some women fake their sexual pleasure. Most women at one time or another have faked it. Well, they haven't faked it with me. How do you know? Because I know. It was Meg Ryan's idea to add that scene to the movie, and Billy Crystal decided on both the restaurant setting and the now iconic line, which is uttered by Reiner's mother. Reiner then directed a very nervous Ryan and perfected the sounds right in front of his own mother. I'll have what she's having. Number four, food poisoning, Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids is one of the funniest movies of the 2010s, which shouldn't be surprising given the incredible talent both behind and in front of the camera. You know, I don't really care which dress we get. It doesn't matter to me. I just need to get off this white carpet. No, okay. Oh, nope. Not the bathroom. Oh, Everybody, oh, go outside! It's also not surprising to hear that many jokes were made up on the fly. Uh-oh. Somebody found a souvenir. You feel that steam heat coming? That's from my undercarriage. Okay. That can go up and higher. These include Megan's shenanigans on the airplane and the now-famous food poisoning sequence. Cinematographer Robert Yeoman revealed to Huffington Post that the food poisoning scene was not part of the original script. No, Megan! No! No! Look away! <laughs> Megan, no! Look away! <laughs> he admitted to being horrified and reluctant to film it, telling the Huff Post, quote, It's not my style of humor, really, and I just wasn't sure how this was all going to be pulled off. But pulled off it was and it quickly became the most famous scene of the movie. We'll just take five of the Fritz Bernays. Thank you, Whitney. They really do look better. Thank you. Number three, but why male models? Zoolander. Arguably, the funniest line of Zoolander didn't come from the airheadedness of Zoolander, but Ben Stiller. Stiller jokingly told Reddit that, quote, he's not really that much smarter than Derek, owing to him bumbling his lines and unintentionally producing a bit of comedy gold. So why male models? While David Duchovny is rattling off what makes male models so useful, Stiller admittedly spaced out and, quote, hadn't followed what he was saying, resulting in him losing his spot and uttering the same line again. But why male models? Rather than laughing or looking off camera in bewilderment, Duchovny decided to roll with Stiller's blunder, producing the funniest bit of back and forth in the entire movie. You serious? I just, I just told you that a moment ago. Number two, waxing, the 40-year-old virgin. Itch. Oh, you! The classic waxing sequence is basically one long extended improv. Wanting the scene to look as real and hilarious as possible, Steve Carell decided to actually get his chest waxed. So the filmmakers just set up five different cameras and let the actors do their thing. Basically, everything about the sequence was totally improvised and natural. Andy's violent and profane exclamations, the blood and tears, the laughing and cringing, and especially the reactions from Paul Rudd, Seth Rogen, and Romney Malko. All were totally natural and completely unplanned. What resulted was pure comedy magic. You know what, guys? This is not a good look for me! Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Munich, Knocked Up. Bonding over the awesomeness of Munich was totally improvised. If any of us get laid tonight, it's because of Eric Van I agree with that. Terry Pete, this is the end. Craig Robinson made up the hilarious name for his monkey flashlight keychain. What is that? That's Terrence Peterson, a monkey flashlight keychain. Monkey flashlight keychain? Mm -hmm. What's his name? Terrence Peterson. You see it, Seth? 
No, where, where, are you sure it's even down here? Terry Ah, uh, not sure. The Maniac, Shaun of the Dead. Nick Frost went through a ton of names for the woman at the Winchester. Cockasidal maniac. <laughs> <laughs> she's an ex-porn star. She's done it all. They so say she's starred in the world's first interracial hardcore loop. Sleepwalking, Step Brothers. Much of the destruction was made up on the spot by Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. <laughs> Miracle Max, The Princess Bride. Much of Miracle Max's dialogue was improvised by Billy Crystal. True love is the greatest thing in the world. Except for a nice MLT, a mutton lettuce and tomato sandwich when the mutton is nice and lean and the tomatoes are ripe. They're so perky, I love that. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Broadcasts Good Morning Vietnam Robin Williams was one of the most gifted comedians of his time, and his unbelievable talent is on full display throughout Good Morning Vietnam. Good Morning Vietnam! Williams portrays Adrian Cronauer, an Air Force airman and a reverent DJ who kept the troops entertained throughout the Vietnam War. A large majority of the broadcast sequences were totally improvised by Williams on the spot, complete with his signature manic energy. Let's pull it right back down again. Let's try it a little faster, see if that picks it up a little bit. Let's get up on 17. His performance was widely acclaimed, and he was even nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actor, a rarity within the comedy genre. It's a fantastic marriage of inspired casting and brilliant performance. And it proves that Williams was truly one of the greats. Very much. Is it true that you've actually, um, you're actually too close to some of the nerve agents that they were testing? Nerve gas? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.